The new Star Wars movie is coming out and I made a poor cake to get all of you Star Wars fans into the spirit. I saw the new Star Wars trailer and I immediately fell in love with this Porg. I have no idea who or what he is or what character he plays, but he's so adorable that I had to turn him into a cake. To make this cake, I made a red velvet cake because my hubby likes it and it's his birthday. And I made five layers of six inch cakes and used my six inch ball pan to make the head. I leveled my cakes and showered them in simple syrup to keep these cakes moist while decorating. I then used a small four inch board underneath my cakes instead of a six inch one because we will be carving this cake into more of a rounded body shape and you don't want the board showing underneath. Also because I'll be carving this cake, I put two rows of Swiss meringue buttercream around the edges to make a dam because I'll be filling this cake with cream cheese icing. And in case you end up cutting off some of the Swiss meringue, you don't want the soft cream cheese icing spilling out the sides. This is a tall cake so you have to be very careful that it won't start tilting. I filled my cakes and then put them in the fridge to cool for 20 minutes. I made this pori cake for my hubby for his birthday because he's actually a very big Star Wars fan. I, on the other hand, have not really even seen the movies, so I really should get on that, but it really helps to have a Star Wars encyclopedia on hand whenever I need it for random facts like I did today. I made the bottom a bit more rounded to look more like a penguin oval shape and tried to make it even all the way around. I then put my round cake on top of the body to measure out where my eyes and mouth will go and began carving the head separately. I made a spot for the eyes, shaved down the sides of his head a bit and cut a hole where the mouth should go. It's always a challenge to try to imagine what the cake will look like once it's all covered in fondant and what parts you want to show. I then crumb coat these cakes, put them in the fridge for 30 minutes, and then give it a final coat. I truly don't have anything against Star Wars. I will watch them at some point. I just haven't had a full week to carve out to watching a full marathon of these movies. I did watch the last two, and I did kind of fall asleep through both of them, but I will be watching the new one on opening day, and the goal is not to fall asleep through that one, and then if I make it through that one, I swear I will have a Star Wars marathon and watch all of them in a row. I used my fondant mat to cover these cakes in fondant. I love this mat and we'll put the link in the description below on where I got this. Put the fondant between the two mats and roll out the fondant. Then remove one side of the mat, lift the other side right up and over the cake. Then remove the fondant slightly and then let it remove itself from the mat and let it fall right onto the cake. You don't actually need a mat to do this, you can just roll it out on the counter if that suits you better. I then smoothed down the fondant like you would normally, going down inch by inch around the cake. Don't be tempted to do one whole side at once, you will end up with creases and folds that way in your fondant. Just go around the cake, doing little by little until you hit the bottom. Then use an X-Acto knife, pizza cutter, or a sharp knife and cut all along the bottom edges and smooth it out. Before putting on the head, I used a long dowel to put right down the center, making sure it's long enough to go right through its head so that the head stays on the top. I then used four bubble tea straws, cut to the sides of the cake to make sure that his head is supported underneath. This step is important because you don't want the cake caving in or toppling over. Then you pick up his head and put it right into the dowel. I used Wilton boards which luckily come with pre-made holes in the bottom, so I already had a hole in the board. If you don't, make sure to cut a hole into the board before starting. Then cover your cake on top with fondant the exact same way you did on the bottom. I didn't trim the bottom straight though this time. This time I made little cuts with a pair of scissors to make it look a little bit more like hair. Apparently people are concerned that the Porg will be like a reincarnation of Jar Jar Binks. And according to my husband, Jar Jar Binks was the worst thing to happen to Star Wars 1, 2, and 3. I assume that means they don't want the Porg to be like a comedy filler in these movies. I'm not sure, but I think he's adorable and hopefully he'll be good. I assume this thing is a penguin or a puffin of some sort. So I made his wings with pretty thick fondant and made them both the same size. I made sure they were in the right position on the cake before gluing it down with some piping gel or water.
I made this board cake to look a little bit like the pop character and the creepier version from the trailer, so he's a bit of an in-betweener. I then dyed some fondant in that orangey porgy color with some orange and brown gel colors and then cut out the shape of it to fit around the eyes. I should have made a stencil for this, it wasn't exactly symmetrical in the end. Once it was on the cake, I used my X-Acto knife to cut the edges to look more like hair. I then used my gum paste tools to make little marks in the wings and top of his head to make it look more like feathers, I guess. I also added a little gray patch to the top of his head, but the camera stopped recording. I made a little mouth out of fondant and stuck it into the indent where his mouth would go using some piping gel. I made a little strip of black to go around the lips for his adorable frowny face. I made this pork have two huge black eyes made of fondant and actually sprayed them with some clear glaze, which again, I forgot to record. I used my fondant extruder to help me make the outline of his eyes in white and then put that around his eyes. Again with his feet, I just made it up as I went along. You could make yourself a stencil for this as well, but I just guesstimated it. Make sure to make them look a bit chunky to make them look more like feet. I stuck them to his little legs and the tops to his belly so that it wouldn't fall off. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and you like this cake, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click right over here to see a movie playlist of all the cakes that I've made from movies that I love. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel right over here and I hope you all have a wonderful time watching the new Star Wars movie. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Bye!